The Royalston Estate, rated among the top 10 of all wildlife estates in South Africa, is an amazing unique place to live, with wildlife right at your back door. And not just any wildlife, they are unique in many ways, and I've been given an amazing opportunity to come out and film a documentary here. <laughs> So it's a beautiful sunrise and we're just here overlooking the plains right now in order for us to get a good vantage point to kind of see where it is we want to go to get the best shots possible because when it comes to filming like a documentary or anything like that you want really nice aesthetics you want it to look pleasing to the eye and then that way we can kind of put in like some good information to kind of create a great attachment and spread some good knowledge about these animals so it takes a bit of time it's a bit colder in the mornings but it's always worth it because the light is always the best when it comes to sunrise, I am spoiled with opportunity as I can experiment with the colors of the sunrise amongst the animals. All right, so we stopped at a really nice spot. We've got some um, giraffe right there. It's that nice little sunrise at the back of them. It's kind of creating a very beautiful silhouette. And then the main target that I had this morning was a sable over there. And the reason for that is that, that the, the logo of Royalston is a sable. So it's kind of like an honorary member of this whole place so you can't come and film a documentary about a place without like showing the main animal that kind of inspires the the graphics behind it as well so it's really cool they're really beautiful and this right here is apparently the bachelor herd these are the boys that haven't created their own herds yet and all that but soon they'll be in fighting spirits and they very much will compete for such a thing and i don't blame them <laughs> all the giraffes are my in-person spectators right now so now the lighting's hitting really nice. We've got some nice giraffe up there. They're so beautiful. And unfortunately, I try to get a nice low shot, but I mean, it's kind of just focusing mainly on the grass here, so it's a bit unfortunate, but they're so beautiful. There's so many to spare out here, so I'm not worried about it at all. But they are stunning, and they're very wary of me. And most of the time, when I kind of get close enough to them for a really cool shot, they tend to show off their worst parts. <laughs> but it's all cool. That's amazing. The giraffes have spoiled me thus far for footage, but it's time to move on as we have to expand our horizons to more species and there are many to spare on this beautiful estate. So we spotted some water buck up there, so we're going to take a little quick stop and I'm just going to take out uh, Terry's big camera here, it's a 300mm lens with a teleconverter, two times teleconverter, so that should get up right there nice and easy. And with the way they're looking in the sun, it's going to be absolutely perfect. Right, so we actually spooked them, they ran off down this way. And I think that's a... Find a nice angle for them now. It's very easy identifying water buck apart from other buck species because it always looks like they're sat on a fresh, wet, painted toilet seat. So it kind of looks like it's been left imprinted on their ass. And of course, after exposing that secret and getting a little too close, they spooked away. Right, so we found the golden wildebeest, but they're a bit far away right now, so we might have to come back during like sunset, just before the sun goes down to see if we can get closer to them, because there's no roads down here. I mean, and I could walk down here, but the truth is, um, they're a lot more used to the cars than they are to people, and when they see us get close to them, they tend to alarm sound, and then all the animals scatter. I mean, they all work together here. There's no predators on the estate, other than like caracals and stuff like that which I mean of all the beers he's going to be very worried about. So I'm still going to get a nice angle on him here. And I mean it's quite cool. And what apparently it is is the recessive gene is now back in the day they used to think it was the black and the blue wildebeest when they bred together they created the golden ones. But the truth is later on they did discover that it was a recessive gene. And it's apparently the lack of blue pigments which are called anthocyanins if I believe uh, I remember correctly. So it's very unique, very interesting. We eventually did stumble across a beautiful herd of golden wildebeest. However, the lighting wasn't the best, but a shot is still a shot. And even though I might have to come back in the future to get some better ones, it was still nice to see a beautiful herd of them playing around. They are magnificent animals and I feel so privileged to have seen them. Right, so we're no longer filming any of the animals right now since the wind has picked up and now the light has gone on a bit harsher. So now Terry's just showing us the, the trails out here and it's, it's so beautiful, it's actually really amazing. 
a lot of bird life as well especially i mean can't really show everything with this camera since it's more of a vlogging camera but just to be out here and see it and all that kind of stuff really amazing and it's stunning enough i love this i mean just take a look at this a bit of that old man's beard there and stuff like that it's always a very good sign to see those wherever you go because it just shows that the oxygen around you is very rich very nutrient which is very important for the environment and the fact that they have that is a very very good sign so the only disadvantage of walking through the trails is you walk through their webs i mean they're suspended in the air yeah <laughs> so we, everyone's just walked through his web and now he's just a bit lost you can see he's got a bit of his web on my hand still so he's trying to climb it that's why he looks like he's dancing around like a maniac but sorry about your web big guy i'm gonna put you here and maybe this will be a little better for you that's it very cool don't worry they're completely harmless all right it looks like our trail walks paid off a bit you see here we've got a nice little creeper scorpion i mean look at the size of those pincers there they're quite massive actually and i mean this is probably someone's nightmare right here but what we're going to do with him is he can definitely be a bit of an ambassador for our documentary so we're going to take some shots of him right here see if we can include him in some way to our documentary and make it more interesting about the royalston reserve right here because i mean you can't just talk about the large animals in the reserve you've got to appreciate the little ones too very cool i mean and just take a look at the, the ends of their feet there they actually have two hooks most people think it'll just be one very bizarre hair <laughs> what a nightmare but i love it no matter where i turn this little log thing he runs all the way to the other side oh now he wants to sizzle there he goes Shit, man let's put him over here he can run back in they aren't just scorpions in the reserve. We must also talk about the amazing snakes that are out here, like this puff adder. So I'm going to be very calm, but essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to put him over here and we're going to do a bit of a video just to kind of help it, let him be a bit of an ambassador for educating other people about these snakes. If he gets away, I'm not going to chase him because it's a, a very dangerous snake and I want to be as careful about this as possible i must actually just do it from that side this will be the way to go puff are notorious for their amazing camouflage and they are infamous for their highly necrotic cytotoxic venom so having a moment like this is crucial for any kind of documentary all right so sun's going down behind me there are all the gold and wildebeest and they are so beautiful watch here there are just so many of them as well and we've got the camera set up there being filmed to get closer to these guys for the documentary that is just awesome so beautiful and there's one just down there look how light he is compared to the others that might be like a double or a super recessive i mean that's quite insane so cool and the sun sets on a successful day of finding huge mammals scorpions spiders and even snakes it was absolutely amazing but it's not over just yet it's time to skip over to tomorrow morning so it's the next morning and we're doing another trail walk yesterday's trail walk was quite successful so i'm pretty excited and you can see this is called the lake house trail apparently because i mean here right next to me all the way down that way is the lake and it's beautiful so the trail goes up goes around it heads up here somewhere or somewhere around there and it overlooks the plains on the other side which is quite nice but i mean that water is beautiful so i'm really excited let's go check it out the trails of royalston have mainly been cut out by two special individuals who stay on the estate rob and terry and they've done an excellent job as these trails are just mind-blowing so just behind there we've got a sable behind the other bush as well there's another sable we'll walk and then you can see that so we've got two beautiful sables there you can see his horns there one sable there oh there he goes and then we've got all the water buck down there that is so cool beautiful so just flipping up the bark as you can see right here i've got a beautiful spotted gecko spotted thick toe gecko for those who like the scientific names pachydactylus maculatus what a beautiful animal. They're a nocturnal species. 
So these guys only come out at night, but during the day, you'll probably never see them. Here you go, big guy. <laughs> so cute. And at the end of the day, guys, unfortunately, I couldn't even film every single animal. There are just so many different species here at Royalson. You're spoiled for options. You could be spoiled with anything from Blessbok and even different types of impalas like the saddleback impalas, there are dark impalas, there are light impalas and the normal impalas and that's just the impalas. There are so many more different species out here, it is incredible and I can't wait to film them all and even more so I cannot wait to post the documentary one day. It will take me a lot of time but it's a fun project and I'm so keen to work on it. I can't wait to see you guys in the future. Peace.